Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. How are you all today? Thank you all for being here. Um, thank you if you're here live with me today. Thank you if you're watching the replay on my Facebook um, business page or perhaps on YouTube later. Thank you. I'll just somebody was trying to call me just then bad timing um, if you're watching on YouTube be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you um, and click on the little bell which is down on the where are we over here down below on the right hand side there be sure to click that bell so that you'll see all notifications when I post up new videos so um, as everyone's jumping on in I'll just call this up on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments there so if you'll bear with me for one moment and there we go great good hi tracy hi athena great to have you both here today just waiting for a few to jump on how are you how was your weekend have you been doing any crafting or anything else interesting or exciting that you'd like to share so um, yes, we had some, oh, actually, before I get into that, I'll just tell you, I've got lots of things to show you today. So um, last week, it was my birthday, and I got sent lots and lots of beautiful cards, and I would like to share them with you today. So um, I'm going to show those all to you before we get crafting, and then I've got a quick and easy project to do today. I thought because we're going to be doing lots of show and tell today, we'll just do a really quick and easy um, project afterwards. Hey Fee, how you going? Great to have you here. So we're just waiting for a few more to jump on before we get started. So let me know what you've been doing. What's everyone been doing on the weekend? We had our um, our team meeting. Um, my, my team is called the Papercraft Gems and we have a team meeting once or a team gathering as we call it once a month via zoom and we had that on saturday um, and so that was really great after the meeting portion we actually had uh, create a kit time together so we got all of our kits out you can see mine over my shoulder there i've got a whole heap stacked up there in my um, trolley and we all got our kits out we all were doing different kits and we created our kits together and just had a lovely creative time as we chatted and yeah, it was lots of fun. It was really good. Um, so yeah, it was it was really great. If you haven't seen any of the Stampin' Up! kits yet, be sure to check them out under Kits Collection in my online store. Um, there's lots there to choose from. Um, there's 10 different kits available at the moment, which is super awesome. Um, and I believe, I didn't check today, but last I spoke to somebody last week and there were still a couple of um, retired kits as well that are available in the clearance rack at a really great price as well so check that out too and see if any of those are still available as well when you're, you jump over there to my online store um, so I had some um, exciting news over the weekend I have a great uh, a brand new great nephew so that was super exciting my niece had her first baby um, on the third I think that was Saturday um, where are we? Yes, Saturday, early hours of Saturday morning. Beautiful little baby boy. His name is Jude and um, and he's gorgeous. But of course, because of COVID, we can't be there and um, we're not sure how long before we'll be able to go and actually meet him and give him cuddles. So hoping it won't be too long. But yeah, the family's all super excited about that. So yeah, so that was lovely news over the weekend. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty much what we did. Yesterday I took the day off and I just had a really cruisy day. Um, did a little bit of crafting, watched a little bit of Netflix. Hey Amanda, great to see you here. Just chatting about um, the news of my little baby nephew and, uh, and what we did on the weekend. So um, yeah, so what did everybody else do on the weekend? Is it just is every day just rolling into the next for you at the moment? It is for me, <laughs> especially with lockdown here in Sydney and not really going anywhere. Um, yeah, every day just sort of see, I'm actually, I've actually been losing track of which day it is. 
So I have to keep checking my planner and my calendar to work out what day we're up to. <laughs> yes, Fee says the same. Yeah, every day is the same, losing track of days. Yeah. So, yeah, so anyway, so I'll be sharing a few of my, uh, well, actually, I'll be sharing all of my beautiful cards today. There's one that I don't have with me at the moment, and it's the beautiful card that my daughter Amber made. Um, and I forgot to grab that off my buffet. So, um, I wonder if I quickly message her and just ask her if she can grab it for me so that I can share that with you because it's beautiful. You'll want to see it. Um, hang on a minute. I will. I'm not sure if she's on with us at the moment. Um, so I'll just send her a little quick message and see if she can grab that so that I can show it to you. It's absolutely beautiful. All right. Now, before we get on with that, oh, I've lost all my comments now because I went out. Ah, now I have to go. I have to go back out and in again. All right. Two six. Let me fix this because I went out of my. Uh, where I was watching my comments on the iPad, then I lost everything. I'll have to go back in. There we go. Good, good, good. We're back. Um, yes. So before we get on to, to all of that, let me just remind you that you may have seen me post up last week. We currently, or Stampin' Up! currently has a designer series paper sale. So it's super amazing. There are nine packs there that are on this sale and they are all 15% off. So I posted up some images last week about that. So if you haven't seen them, check that out in my um, business page here after my Facebook Live finishes. So this goes, um, started on the 1st of July and it goes until the 2nd of August. So there's lots of time and we're gonna be using some of our beautiful designer series paper today um, so that I can show you um, a few different ways of using it. And I've got something else to show you to do with that as well. So um, we'll be having a look at that. Now, something else that's exciting is just last week, I received my beautiful new mini catalog, which is coming out on the 3rd of August. Now it says on here to July to December, because originally that's when it was going to launch. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, there were lots of delays. So Stampin' Up! had to delay the release of it till August, but the printing had already happened. So they weren't able to change any of the, the printing of the catalogs, but the actual launch date got changed to the 3rd of August. So that is super exciting. Let me move over a little bit so you can see it. So as demonstrators, we were able to um, pre-order products from the new catalogue, which I put in my pre-order last week on the 1st, the first day that we were able to. I was hoping it would arrive today so that I could show you, but unfortunately it hasn't arrived yet. Um, it must be coming tomorrow. I know that it's already with the couriers, so it's on its way. So I'll have some new things to show you next week, which is really exciting. Um, now, if you join with Stampin' Up! right now, you can purchase um, from the mini catalogue as well as from the annual catalogue. And not only that, on the 3rd of August, we'll also have Celebration launching as well. And with Celebration, um, with any purchase of $90 or above, you get to choose a free product from the Celebration brochure, which is super exciting. And as um, demonstrators, we've actually been able to um, pre-earn those already. So I've already got some of these coming to me as well. So I'll be able to share those with you next week too. So it's super exciting. Um, now, I have already sent these catalogs out to my current customers who have purchased with me in the last six months. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator or perhaps you've been a past customer of mine um, and you would still like the catalogues, please let me know so that I can send them to you. Um, if you already have a demonstrator that you're working with, please ask them for um, their, your catalogues because they'll be able to give those to you. But if you don't already have a demonstrator, I would love to look after you. So please let me know and I'd love to get those catalogues out to you as well as our beautiful annual catalogue if you don't have this one yet either. Um, I'd love to get one of these to you as well. Now this one I've had spiral bound. They don't come like that with a spiral binding. I go to um, Officeworks, our local stationer, and get that done. And then I've added in all my tabs. I finally got all my tabs in for my spiral bound copy now. So I'm a happy, happy girl. 
um, and I've kept my wish list all my wish list tabs in my other copy of my catalog I didn't put them over into this one I thought I keep this one a little bit cleaner <laughs> so <laughs> this one's just got a tab of what we're going to be using today so I'll show you that in a little bit so um, yeah so lots of exciting things happening in Stampin Up now in saying that if you have a long wish list or you just love the Stampin Up products and you want to get them at a 20% discount which can be um, turned into a 25% discount as well as time goes on please let me know because I would love to have a chat with you about that and answer any of your questions so what happens is if you would like to get that discount you purchase the Stampin Up starter kit for $169 now when you do that you can actually choose $235 worth of product to put into that starter kit so it's not a set starter kit you get to choose exactly what you want to put in there so it's super exciting so if you've got a big wish list you can push that put those wish list items in there um, and build that up to $235 and only pay 169 plus you get free shipping on that order as well um, so that is another super saving which is awesome you'll then from then get 20% discount on all of your orders or all of your products um, and then as well as that you'd be joining my wonderful team of beautiful crafters um, we have a beautiful community in our team and um, we've made we've all made such beautiful friends in our team there um ah amber has snuck the card in thank you amber <laughs> she snuck the card in and popped it just on my bookcase so i'll grab that in a minute um yes and we have a lot of fun together um we have a facebook group specially just for our team and um, i put in their creative challenges each month for those that would like to um, participate and then i give prizes um, i do recognitions for my team and give them awards and vouch spending vouchers and all sorts of things we have a lot of fun together and as i was saying at the beginning of this live today on um, Saturday just gone we had our team gathering and after the team gathering we had um, our creative kit gathering so we all got our kits out and we all crafted together via zoom and it was a lot of fun so yeah Fee just said lots of fun we do have lots of fun together and we have a beautiful team of beautiful people um, and being part of that creative community is just amazing and you get to meet people from all around the world as well because it's not just all about my team it's about the Stampin' Up um, it's about the wider Stampin' Up family as well and um, there's uh, Facebook groups for demonstrators only there's also the demonstrator website there's all sorts of things always happening in Stampin' Up and you we have demonstrator only events which are awesome we've all met all of us that have gone to on stage um, or any of those other on uh, demonstrator events have met so many other people people from other countries and it's it's a really a beautiful community I can't tell you I can't speak of it highly enough so if it sounds exciting to you and sounds like something you're interested in please have a chat with me um, if you think straight away oh yep that sounds awesome I, I want to go and um, find out more I'm ready to sign up you can go to my online store and um, if you go to my blog sorry not to my store if you go to my blog which is um, Mandy's papercraft creations dot .com, up the top there is a joining button next to the shop button so you can click on that and go straight through um, there's some information there that you can read and then um, yeah if you'd like to join up directly feel free to go there um, but otherwise I'd love to have a chat with you all right who is ready to see some beautiful things let me just move all of my um, papers aside now keep in mind today oh actually I'll keep that one out about the designer series paper because one of the papers that are on sale are the ones that we're going to be using today so I'll refer back to that oh that was a big stretch to put that over there um and while I'm stretching I'll run and just grab that card of Amber's because you want to see it it's absolutely beautiful just one moment okay I'm gonna hold hers till last to show you because it's it's um, really really beautiful all right so as I was saying last week was my birthday so I got lots and lots of beautiful um, 
cards sent to me. Now I got some from friends and uh, uh, most of which are demonstrators and I also got some from um, my team. Hang on, I'm trying to work out where the middle is. This way. I'm going to go that way. <laughs> so some from my friends, um, some from my team members and then I got a whole stack. I'm in a, um, a Facebook group and um, of crafters and a whole heap of them sent me cards as well which was really lovely made me feel very special and made my birthday um, ultra ultra special so of course with lockdown couldn't do anything um, a friend of mine had plans to take me out for lunch and we couldn't go so that was really disappointing but my girls made the day special and they decorated the house beautifully they made me a very special cake um, and then in the evening we had a special dinner together so that was really lovely so all right so let me show you some of these cards I'll show you the ones from um, my friends and team members first and then I'll show you all the other ones so this beautiful one is from my friend um, Sharon Martin she's actually a demonstrator in New Zealand and we went, we met through um, Stampin Up through one of the training groups we belong to isn't that just gorgeous now, I'm not going to be able to quote all of the stamp sets that have been used in all of these cards. I'm sorry because there's so many that I'm not going to remember the names of all of the stamp sets. So if you know them, feel free to call them out in the comments. Oh, hey, Megan, how are you going? I'm just showing my, um, my birthday cards that I got last week. So this one is gorgeous. Um, Sharon's done the smooching um, technique in the back there with um, her blocks and inks. And then she's run, she's done her stamping, and then she's run that whole whole piece through the um, through an, with an embossing folder through the stamp and cut and emboss machine, which has given it a fantastic effect. And then she's 3D these flowers as well, so it's really beautiful. Thank you, Sharon. Then I got this one from. I've got to keep checking who I got which one from. Ah, this one I got from Fee. Fee's with us today. I love this one, Fee. It's so beautiful. Fee, um, can you let everybody know which stamp set um, and suite you used for this one, please? I know it's the seashells something, but I can't remember exactly which one it's called. <laughs> but this is beautiful. This one was from Fee. So thank you so much for that, Fee. And there's embossing done as well, which you probably can't pick up on camera but these are actually stamped and embossed and die cut as well so that's pretty cool they've got a lot of texture in there i love cards with texture yeah so that's gorgeous thank you fee um this one i got this one is actually hand painted this one is from judy um judy's my sister-in-law and she's often um here with us for our facebook live but i think she's not here yet today and she's actually hand painted these flowers I think she has used pastels, soft pastels. That's what it feels like because there's, there's a bit of a chalky texture. And um, she's actually hand painted that. She's very, very creative. She does beautiful painting, um, very artistic. So isn't that gorgeous? Very special. And then this one is from my friend, Alison Britt. She's also a demonstrator down in Melbourne. And this one is super cute using the snail mail snail mail sweet there we go um which the uh the designer series paper has just retired in the last chance products um the stamp set the stamp set did that carry over into the annual catalog does anybody remember I'm just trying to think if the stamp set's still available super cute though i love it so adorable then i got um this one from Nadine, Nadine and her family. Nadine is in my team as well. Um, this is really, really pretty using some of the um, paper. I think that was from the last celebration, that paper, wasn't it? That was beautiful. And this, this die set is still available in the annual catalogue. Um, oh, the stamp set, the snail mail stamp set retired too. Thank you, Amber. I couldn't remember. Oh, and fees was um, Friends Like Seashells, that one. Friends, friends are like seashells is that one and then this one was snail mail and that one has just retired which is a shame it was so cute <laughs> but yeah this one's beautiful thank you Nadine 
And then I got this one from one of my friends and team members, Tina Marie. Now, Tina Marie knows that I love rainbows. Um, and this is one of those spinner cards. Hang on, let me turn the little thingy. And she's made a, a rainbow. And then she's got a little greeting there, cherished friend. And then you turn it again to get the rainbow. Isn't that beautiful? So pretty. Thank you, Tina Marie. I love that one too. And also too, Tina Marie made me a little ornament as well with some of our dyes. Isn't that gorgeous? And she's put that onto um, a solid gold ring. It's not one of the gold, I don't, I don't think it's one of the, no, it's not one of the Stampin' Up! gold hoops that we used to have. It's a gold ring. I'm not sure where that's from, but um, yeah, really pretty. So now that I've shown that, because I was hanging on to it till today, now that I've shown that, I'm gonna hang it on my cupboard because I've got one special hanging one there from my friend Sharon in New Zealand. And I'm going to hang Tina's on the next cupboard door. That one there. <laughs> so that'll be um, hanging there behind me to decorate as well. Um, all right. So let me show you. So first of all, I received a thank you card for a birthday card I had sent. So I'm in a, um, a group that does random act of kindnesses. It's called Southern Skies, if you haven't heard of it. Um, and it, they send out random act of kindness cards to people in the community. They also collect cards for charities and they send them off to charities. Um, they also have a birthday list if you want to receive birthday cards. And so I added my name to the birthday list. And so that's why I have these cards. Some of these people I, I know of through Stampin' Up, um, but some of these people I've never met before. And they, I don't think they're all demonstrators either. But I had sent some cards out and one of them I got a thank you card back. So that was really nice. This is from Kerry um, Cranis, And this is a really pretty thank you card that she sent for me sending her a birthday card. So that was nice. Um, this one is from Nolene. Now I'm not sure of Nolene's last name. She didn't have her last name on um, her envelope or in her card. So I'm not sure... Um, of Nolene's last name but thank you Nolene that's really beautiful and I loved this this was one of the paper pumpkin kits this was the um, the one that was inspired by Shelley Gardner actually I loved this one so pretty then I've got this one this one is from um, Nancy or I'm, I might muck up how I pronounce the surname I think it's Hoyt, Hoytke Nancy Hoytke and this is really pretty Again, using some of our beautiful designer series paper. This one's retired now, but that was the um, Daisy something. Really beautiful. I love the layout. Really simple, really beautiful. Then I've got this one from Karen Gifford. Very cute. My favorite, one of my favorite colors, purple and pink are my favorite colors, for those of you that don't know. And she's used some um, gold stickers there and for the sentiment as well really lovely this one is very cute this next one using the puffins and this is from priscilla um, gunton and priscilla is one of the admins in the group isn't that cute and it's all i'm not sure if you'll see it but it's all sparkly it's been done on glimmer paper so everything is all um sparkly which is really cute and i love the spiral die if you saw my um I did a Facebook Live a little while ago using the spiral die. It was super fun to play with. This one is gorgeous too. This is from Ingrid Hansen. And Ingrid has used, if you're wondering where these dies come from, these are actually current dies. They're called the Iconic Dies. They're on page 163. Um, and then she's also used the picture this die, picture this dies, and the expression in ink designer series paper. Isn't that beautiful? So pretty. I love that designer series paper. It's one of my favorites. I've got a couple of favorites, but it's I think it's my ultimate favorite. It's really beautiful. But how cool are these dies? Because I was looking at them thinking, I haven't seen those dies before. I wonder where they're from. And then I looked in the back of the catalog and it's one of those standalone die sets. And there's quite a few different dies in there, but really beautiful. 
Oh, Megan says, um, nice card. Nancy makes lovely cards. Yes, she does. Then we've got this one from Sam Wheatley. Thank you, Sam. Again, great use of designer series paper, which is great because we're going to be talking a lot about designer series paper today. So super cool. And then this was one of my previous favorite designer series papers. This one is from Elizabeth Meyer. Isn't that beautiful? So pretty. And that ribbon is still current. We still have that petal pink ribbon. That's beautiful. Thank you, Elizabeth. Now this one I thought was pretty cool too. This is um, Linda Machel. I think it's Machel, M-A-C-H or Machel, M-A-C-H-E-L-L. Thank you, Linda. I love this one too. Really cool. So Linda's die cut the circles and then she's run them through the um, the wavy embossing folder. I think that, that embossing folder's um, retired now, I think. Um, but yeah, super cute. I love the colors. The colors work well together too. And the coloring that she's done in the mermaid towel is awesome. Then we have this one from Linda Slatter. It's very pretty, very colorful. Isn't that lovely? That bird is just gorgeous. So pretty. Oops. Um, this one's from Elizabeth Yager. Um, Y-A-G-E-R. I'm sorry if I'm getting these pronounce, mispronouncing these surnames. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the shine on that beautiful butterfly. And she's used some of the pigment sprinkles in the background there too. Do you know I bought those pigment sprinkles and they're still brand new in the packet. I never actually got around to using them. I think I played with one of them, but I didn't actually end up making anything with them. So super awesome. All these cards put so much, so many smiles on my face when I um, opened them. Really, really special. This one is from Stella Joseph. Very cute little birthday cake with the candles. Thank you, Stella. And then this one is from Janine Adams. And this is really lovely. Look at that. Aren't they gorgeous, those flowers? And she's done the outline here with the, um, uh, oh, I'm not sure, gold. Oh, it might have been gold shimmer cardstock that we had, um, we usually get a gold and silver shimmer cardstock around Christmas time, like usually in the holiday, uh, in the um, August, it'll be August to December mini catalog this year, or what we used to call the holiday catalog. And then this one is from Marie Hook. Thank you, Marie, it's very pretty, gorgeous. Such bright, vibrant colors, aren't they? And they're my favorite colors again, pink and purple. So Marie must have known. <laughs> then there's this one from Margaret Sumner. Thank you, Margaret. Very pretty, soft colors. Um, Margaret has fussy cut all of this, all of these flowers. She's fussy cut all of those. Isn't that pretty? Then we've got, I recognize this paper. I loved this paper when this paper was out. This is from Elizabeth Walder. I think I've still got some of this actually in my designer series paper stack. Um, really beautiful with those butterflies. I love those butterflies. And the punch that we had that coordinated with them as well. And this one, oh, this one, this one I got a tea bag as well. I got a couple of tea bags actually, which was nice. I've kept them with the cards for the moment, but I thought after I show them today, I'm going to take them out so I can drink the tea. <laughs> this one's from um, Julianne Marchant, and um, Julianne sent me the tea bag and a little letter in there as well. And I love this, it's so beautiful. How gorgeous is that kimono? I love anything Japanese. We've got a couple of Japanese friends who were our um, our exchange students many years ago. And so anything Japanese I love. So isn't that gorgeous? And she's used some Japanese papers there as well. I used to do, back in the day, long, long time ago, many moons ago, I used to do a lot with Japanese papers. I think I've still got them stashed away somewhere. 
This one is from Heather Whelan and I got a little letter as well from Helen which was really lovely and she's used the um, she's used the Shelly the Shelly inspired um, paper pumpkin kit as well and she's made that into a larger card like a standard um, card size so that's really pretty as well one of my favorites <laughs> um, oh hey Julie how you going I just saw that you'd popped on it is gorgeous isn't it Tracy yes very beautiful this one is from Jessie Holton Jessie is one of my friends I've met through Stampin Up um, she's also in the um, Southern Skies uh, card makers group as well but um, Jessie is one of my friends I've met through one of the training groups I belong to and she is such a beautiful soul and um, Jessie lives down in Victoria so thank you Jessie I love that love that beautiful paper it's so pretty now this one is from this one's actually from this one came through Southern Skies card makers group but this is actually one of my team members Amanda so Amanda Fitzgerald thank you Amanda I love this I've already thanked you personally it's really beautiful thank you so much so this is from Amanda and her family um, really pretty so she's used the um, oh, I can't remember the sweet somebody remind me please <laughs> All the sweets have just gone and the, the names of everything have just gone out of my head. Um, oh, hey, Kathleen. How are you? Great to have you here. Um, oh, what's this sweet called? Somebody remind me. It, someone will put it in the comments. I'm just waiting for the comments to catch up. <laughs> um, this next one is from Jennifer Rust. Artistly, um, Artistly Inked. Artistly, art, artistically, artistically inked. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Oh, goodness. Um, yes, yeah, so sorry. This next one is from Jennifer Rust. And she's used, she's also used some retired DSP, which I still have some of this one too. But this is a really cool fun fold card. So it opens like that. Isn't that cool? So it's like a gatefold card and then the, the um, sentiment label is sort of like the, the latch on the gate. Cool, hey. Really pretty. This next one is from um, Joy Smith. Again, great use of our designer series paper. Really pretty. With um, one of our beautiful labels there and um, our current petal pink ribbon that's still available. Um, I love how everyone's used their designer series paper on these cards, which is awesome. So this one's from Alina Morris, and um, Alina lives fairly local to me, actually, which is awesome. So thank you, Alina. That's beautiful. Very pretty. This one is from Paula Duke, and Paula is um, one of the other admins of the group, actually. So thank you, Paula. That's really pretty. Love the colours. Love those sort of pastel-y colours together. They look really pretty. Very beautiful. Um, I also got this one from um, Jojo Miller. Um, thank you, Jojo. Very cute card. Love all the, the, um, the different butterflies and flowers that you've got on there. Really sweet and beautiful. Thank you so much, Jojo. And then this one, I got another tea bag. I got some more green tea. Um, this one's really pretty. And this one is from Norma um, Padula. I think it's, it's pronounced Padula, P-A-D-U-L-A. And look at the sparkle and the shine on this one. Isn't that gorgeous? And she's white embossed a, um, a verse there. It says, a birthday should be happy, just perfect through and through, especially when the day belongs to someone as special as you. Isn't that gorgeous? And she's done like the book binding um, um, technique, I guess you'd say, on the, the card there. So it opens like that. Isn't that pretty? So there you go. So that was all my birthday cards, but I've got Amber's one to show you too. So I've receiving all of those cards um, just made me feel so special 
and um, really made my my birthday made my day um, even more beautiful and especially when we're in lockdown I couldn't go out and do anything you know go anywhere or do anything so yeah so um, having those random act of kindness cards really does make a difference to people as well um, so it's a you know any of those there's quite a few random act of kindness groups in Facebook um, so you just need to hunt around for them you could just put random act of kindness or something in the in the top if uh, there's a couple that I know of if you would like to know of them you can send me a private message and I can let you know which ones um, I belong to but um, yeah it's just a great way of sending cards out to people to just brighten their day um, and as I said there's birthday lists in some of those groups and then there's just random act of kindnesses as well um, and other groups that collect for charity donations as well so um, some of my team donated recently to a couple of different ones that uh, those cards will be, will be donated to aged care facilities and then there was another one that was collecting for Ronald McDonald House so some of us sent cards there for Ronald McDonald House for some of the children there some of the sick kids so yeah so it's just a beautiful way of being able to share what we love and to brighten up somebody else's day and that's what it's all about isn't it it's about that and community it's all about the people all right let me show you Amber's beautiful one now Amber has used current product on hers and let me just show you first I'll find the, the sweet so I can show you first I'll preempt hers um, so she's used the pansy petal sweet and I'm just finding it so if you haven't seen the pansy petal sweet it's this one from pages 28 and 29 on the annual catalog I'll go over this way so she's used this beautiful sweet to make my card because she knows I love this one too and this is the card that she's made which is so amazing are you ready there you go look at that so she's created the pot herself she's used our whisper white ink on there to distress the pot to make it look like an aged terracotta pot and then she's cut all of those beautiful flowers and arranged them beautifully in the pot and it's got this cute little tag on there with my little with the little sentiment isn't that just beautiful and it sits up like sort of like an easel type card isn't that just gorgeous so she designed that herself so thank you so much amber i know i've already thanked you for that but um yeah it's absolutely beautiful so oh now I don't, i'll put it up there where it won't get I don't want to pop anything on top of it and ruin it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Amber makes Amber makes amazing projects. She's very very talented. So it's um it's a shame that she can't join Stampin' Up because she lives in our house as well with us. So I um, can't have two demonstrators under the same living in the same um in the same address. So but yeah, she would make an amazing demonstrator. <laughs> She makes beautiful projects. All right. So, oh, I'm hot now. All right. So we're going to be playing with some designer series paper because we've got the designer series paper on special. Now, <laughs> Amber says, thank you, everyone, for your lovely comments. Yeah, we've got lots of lots of lovely comments. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is adorable. Stunning. Wow, that is stunning. Wow, that is gorgeous. Love it, Amber. Yeah, Amber's very thankful. <laughs> Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, I've got something to show you before we go on to create our project because I want to ask you um, about this as well. So what I'll do is I'll cover up the camera and I'll get that down onto our desktop or my desktop so that we, we can create down there. So if you bear with me for a moment, I'm going to cover up the camera and tip it down. Um, it might be a little bit clunky while I just do this, so just bear with me for a moment. And I'll flip my cameras. There we go. All right, here we go. Oops. Nearly just lost my phone out of my holder then. That would have been drastic. Actually, hang on a minute. That's not adjusting right. Sorry, just bear with me a bit longer.
trying to work it. There we go. I think that's better. All right, I'll tighten all this back up. Lucky I've got the camera covered up today because I'm really um, shaking that around a lot today. It'll make you all dizzy. Right, there we go. We'll see how that looks. We'll see if that's close enough down on the desk. And if not, I can move it a little bit closer. Oh, we're not straight. Is that better? Okay, how close are we? Let's have a look. I'll put some glue there and we'll see. I'm just waiting for the camera to catch up so I can see if that's um, how close up that is. Oh, that's not too bad, is it? Okay. All right, let me take a little sip of water. I've been doing all that talking. Right, okay. So what I was going to tell you about, we'll go back to the designer series paper for a moment. So um, with the paper sale at the moment, as I said to you, there's um, quite a few packets of paper that are on special. It's not all of them that, that are in the annual catalog. It's just these select nine packets. So we've got Beauty of the Earth, Bloom Where You're Planted, Hand Penned, that's the one we're going to be playing with today, In Good Taste, In the Wild, Pansy Petals, Sweet Symmetry, Tidings of Christmas, so that's the, um, the Christmas one that we've got in the annual catalogue, and then You're a Peach. Now, I just did a class with You're a Peach on the, um, uh, well, I filmed it last week. The class is actually coming up on Saturday coming, actually. Um, I loved playing with that paper and that whole suite actually that was awesome. I loved that um, I purchased a few of these that I didn't have yet. So um, Yeah, so I stocked up but it is a great time to stock up at the moment as well because you will get 15% off those packs um, Now in saying that all of these ones except for the In Good Taste one, all of these ones are normally $20. They're on special for $17 here in Australia, okay? This one, the In Good Taste pack, it's a bigger pack. There's more papers in that one. That one is normally um, $37, but currently, while it's on special, it's $31.45, so that's a good saving there. So um, if you want to have a closer up look at those, you can either jump onto my um, my online store, which is Mandy's Paper. Uh, you'll find it through my blog at mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. Um, and you can get a better close up look of them to see if any of those are the ones that you would like to purchase. But it's a great time to stock up on our designer series papers. Now, Last week, as demonstrators, we had a special event um, and I was wondering if this would be something that you would be interested in me showing. Um, perhaps next week I could do it. I'll just move my, my um, signs down so that you can see them there. Um, now, before I show you those, just a reminder too that if you are shopping with me in my online store, be sure to use my current host code. Um, any orders that are over $50 receive a thank you gift from me. So uh, just make sure that you do use that host code when you are shopping so that I'm able to send you that um, lovely thank you gift. All right, so what we did is, um, and this isn't what we're doing today, but I wanted to just quickly show you the cards to see if it's something that you're interested in that you would like me to show perhaps next week. But we did what is called, um, if you've ever heard of a one sheet wonder, this one was called a pick six wonder. So we used six coordinating sheets of designer series paper. They were cut at six by six um, inches. So it's basically a quarter pack or a quarter, a quarter sheet of designer series paper. And we made a total of 14 cards out of just those six six by six pieces of designer series paper. So that's why it's called Picks, a pick six wonder. And I thought I'd show them to you today just to see um, if you like these, I can show you actually how to do this um, next week. Now, um, I'll show you quickly the cards and I'll tell you about them as we go. So we cut our, um, we had like a pattern 
and we cut I'll just show you um oh yeah I'll show them one at a time we had a pattern for each of our six by six papers and we cut them um, in a specific way to get all these different size pieces okay so these were the little leftover pieces and that was the um, last one that I made and then basically all you do is once you put all the designer series paper on your card then you just add some ribbon and a sentiment and some bling and so we were just using punches so you can use any shape punch you like I'll just move them across we did this cool one with the um, it has like interlocking pieces and then you fold them in a certain way and you get like four different patterns so I used several different punches as you can see here on my cards and I did different layouts as well so these are the, the three cards that we made with this um, this um, fold or yeah this cut and I use different labels on each of those um, and it's a great way to use our designer series paper and then I just went back and added some bling later this one oh there's four of these not sure if I'll fit them all on camera hang on there's three that go this way so there's those three so you get these three um, rectangles and you can put them in different ways like this was the original um, layout that they they showed and then I did my own thing with these two and then this one as well this one's really nice and bright this is the same designer series paper as what we're going to be using today but we're not making these cards today specifically then we had these ones where we made the um, the hearts ourselves um, which was really easy to do and then we just um, added the the sentiment and the ribbon and bling um, I double layered a lot of my sentiment or most of them I think I double layered a lot of my sentiments so just to make them pop a bit more so and then we've got these ones these ones were the last ones so I we calculated that out of one pack of 12 by 12 designer series paper if you do this system this pick six wonder system you can get a total of 112 cards from one pack of designer series paper or 12 by 12 designer series paper so how cool is that so it's a great way of and of course I've, I've used um, the um, hand penned designer series paper so the papers all coordinate together um, so that's the, that's the best thing is you just choose one pack of papers and so then you know that all of the papers are going to coordinate so if that is something that you would like to see me show you how to do that um, let me know in the comments because I can certainly show you that on either next week or the week after or something in a Facebook live so um, yeah just let me know if you would like to see the the pick six it's called pick six wonder if you'd like to um, if you'd like to see that all right let me show you what we're going to be playing with today so of course we're playing with some of our beautiful designer series paper Actually, let me show you in our catalogue where you can find that paper if you're looking for it. Um, do, 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 do. Where are we? Where are we? We are here. Oh, Julie says yes, please. She'd like to see how to do it. Fantastic. Great. Okay. Anybody else who's interested in seeing how to do that pick six wonder? All right, so page 130 to 100 and so 130 to 134 you'll see all the designer series papers there in your catalog um, up a little bit closer or oh, Kathleen said yes as well yes please she'd like to see how to do it fantastic um, so yeah so if you want a closer look at those designer series papers have a look in your catalog or as I said jump on my website now we're going to be playing with today the hand penned designer series paper and we're going to be playing with the um, colors and contour bundle so I've played with the 
I've had the dies for a little while, but I only recently got the stamp set that coordinated with it because I didn't get them together. I wasn't originally going to get the stamp set and then I decided that I wanted it. So um, always a good idea is if you're looking at the bundles, get them together because you do save yourself 10%. <laughs> so don't do what I do and buy them individually. <laughs> It's good to get them together. Um, so I really like that stamp set. Um, I wanted to play with designer series paper today because of the sale. And I really liked this card in the catalog. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna case that. So we're gonna case this one today, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. So I've already done a sample, um, but I'm gonna change it up again because I'm not 100% happy with the colors that I use. So I'm gonna change the colors of the flowers. Um, but I'll show you how and I changed it a little bit from this one as well because I didn't have the additional designer series paper um, there at the bottom. I've used ribbon instead because, you know, all of my cards have to have ribbon and bling. In fact, this one doesn't yet have the bling on it. I haven't put it on yet, so I'll have to go back and do that. But let me show you. So this is the card that I created. So as I said, it's cased from the catalog with just a few changes. So I inked around the edge of my label. Uh, I used different colors as well. And I used ribbon here instead of um, the additional cardstock. But how gorgeous is this, rib uh, this paper? So let me show you the hand penned designer series paper. And again, this is one of the ones that is on special um, at 15% off. So you can get the whole pack for $17. It's a 12 by 12 designer series paper and you get 12 sheets in there. So there's all the beautiful florals. Really hard to see them all together because um, there's so many going on there together. But if I kind of show you like that, you can see I love this one. This is my favorite one. Actually, I used this one, um, was it last week I used this one? week before i can't remember now i've used it not long ago anyway this one's gorgeous you could even use this one actually for christmas cards i reckon these colors will be great for christmas cards in that one and then there's that one and then if i flip these over i'll show you the reverse side as well whoops so on the reverse side you've got these gorgeous um colors and patterns as well so if the other color, if the floral side is too busy for you, you might like this side. Um, and they do coordinate, so you can um, use them together as well. Aren't they beautiful? So that's what we're using today. All right, so I'm going to um, bring in, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of cutting of the cardstock with you today. Okay, so that's the one that we're gonna create. Now the colors in this, um, designer series paper in this paper pack are uh, there's lots of them we've got basic black blushing bride cinnamon cider daffodil delight garden green highland heather mint macaron misty moonlight moonlight pale papaya pool party and white so there's a real lot of um, colors in there in that paper pack so i've chosen the um i've chosen this piece and i've already cut down some of this so I've chosen this one and I wanted to bring out the blue in this paper. So I was thinking, will I go blue? Will I go pink? Will I go pool party? And I thought, no, I'm going to go blue with this one. So I want to really bring out the blue. So I'm using um, Misty Moonlight. Now I've already cut this piece of Misty Moonlight cardstock in half. So this was an A4 sheet. I've cut that in half and now I'm just going to score this. So that I can fold it nicely. So I'm going to score this at 10 and a half. So this one measures currently 21 centimeters by 14.85. Okay, and I'm going to score this using my scoring blade um, at 10 and a half. So this is my scoring blade, the light gray blade. And I just run that over a couple of times to give a nice score mark in my card. And then when you're scoring your cardstock, you always fold it with the mountain fold, so the bumpy part, the part that sticks up on the inside, okay? So now fold that in half. All right, we're going to cut a little bit. We're going to do a bit of cutting in a moment, so I'll just pop that to the side for a moment. I'll take my bone folder. This 
cardstock is very thick and strong, so we want to um, reinforce that fold. So we'll just burnish that with our um, bone folder and help that to sit down flat. I'll bring this back in. Now we're going to cut our designer series paper and we're going to cut our designer series paper with a three millimeter border. So we're going to cut this at 9.9 .9 centimeters. So we go to 9.9. .9. Okay, and 14.25. 14.25. Two five and the two five is halfway between the two and the three line, and we're using our dark um, blade, which is our cutting blade. Now you'll have a little bit on left over. Keep that because you can use that to decorate the inside of your card when you do your insert in your card. Okay. Now I'm going to cut down a bit of um, basic white. I've got the thick basic white today. In fact, I think this one might be whisper white. I think this is my leftover whisper white. I haven't broken into my thick basic white yet. So I like to always cut my um, white card bases and my, well actually all of them. I do this with all of them. I take an A4 sheet and I cut it in half at 14.85. Now if I choose to, I have two full card bases. Okay, so I could just fold them in half and I would have, ah, oh, hi, Navon. Great to see you all the way from Minnesota. Thank you for joining us. So yeah, so we have two full card bases there now, um, if I want to use them as card bases. From there, then I cut them down again at 10 and a half, and that gives me a workable piece. So now basically what that is, that is a card front size. So this is my full card. This one is now the same size as a card front. And for me, that works well because that is a nice workable size. I can then choose to do um, lots of different things with that. All right, so I only need one of those at the moment. Um, I'm going to cut this in half again because I need to. I need half of it for our die shape, so our um, scalloped rectangle, and half of it for our um, flowers. So I'm now going to cut this one at... Um, where were we? So that one was 14.85. I'm cutting it at 7. Point, well, actually, I probably don't need to. I probably are. Oh, I think I cut the original one at 6.3. So it wasn't actually in half. One, two, three. But you could cut it in half and still probably have enough. But I think I cut it a bit more than half because I needed to. I'll show you why I decided to do it at that size. I took the die, so these are the dies that we're using. This is the um, the scalloped contour dies. So we're using the third, it's actually the third largest and the third smallest, it's the one in the middle. We're using that one today. We're also going to be using this one here for the flowers once we stamp the flowers. So they're the two we're going to be using. So I needed to fit both of these on my thick whisper white piece. So what I did um, earlier, I just basically measured what I needed for my die. And that's how I worked out that I needed 6.3, roughly 6.3 centimeters. And then, actually no, I've written that down wrong. It must have, maybe it was 7.3, one, two, three. Oh, it must've been 7.3. Yes, I think I wrote that down wrong because I was thinking, hang on, 6.3, that doesn't look right. Yeah, 7.3. Silly me. I'll fix that up on my little notes here. 7.3. That's it. All right, so we'll cut that one down at 7.3. Oops. Oh, just lost it. Hang on, let's do that again. One, two, three. There we go. And that's almost in half it's just a little bit off from half and then they're nine centimeters um, 9.5 centimeters long so then now I'll be able to fit my rectangle on one and I'm going to stamp my um, flowers on the other and then I'll have room to to die cut that as well all right okay so that's all of our die cutting done I'll pop that to the side all right, I've also got a piece of ribbon. Now this ribbon 
This is the first time I'm using this ribbon. It's so beautiful. I just got this in my last order. This is the Mint Macaron Soft Velvet Ribbon. It's um, 1.3 centimeters thick, so it's quite thick, or that's half an inch, and it is gorgeous. Oh, hi, Renee. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so this ribbon is absolutely beautiful, um, and today is the first time I'm using it. So I've already um, cut, trimmed my ends so that I've got them sort of bannered there at the ends, uh, but it's, this is really beautiful. I don't know the length that I cut that at, actually. I should measure that for you. So it's 15 to there. I've only got my 15 centimeter ruler. 15, 25, 28, 28 centimeters I cut that to. All right, so let's do our stamping and then we'll do all of our die cutting together. So I'll keep that to the side ready to die cut and I'll do our stamping. So there's a couple of different um, ways that you can do this. So this is the stamp outline that I'm using. Now the images shown on the front of the case here are shown at 85% so that all of those images would fit on the front. Oh, Navon says she hates centimeters, she's never done them and they just seem hard to you. <laughs> That's because you use a different size um, base card stock to us, Navon. Um, yeah, ours is... Uh, our metric conversion, is our A4 cardstock is a bit of a different size to yours. So that's why it's probably confusing for you. Um, so I'm going to use this outline here. And as I said, it, the stamp itself is actually bigger than the image you see here. Now you do have, this is a two-step stamp set. So you do have the color images, the solid color images there that you can use as well. Now I did one of those earlier to show you what that looks like. So when you're using this image, it's like an artistic sort of finish that you get. And the color is not supposed to exactly color the whole image, okay? It sort of gives like an artistic effect, a bit like a watercolor effect. Now you can use that and, and do that, or you can do what I've done and actually color the flowers in. I'll show you the two side by side color the flowers in yourself using um, Stampin' Blends, which is what I did, or you can use watercolors or watercolor pencils or whatever you like. So that's the two different looks. It depends on the kind of look that you're going for. I was going more for this kind of look. Um, so yeah, totally up to you. But the good thing is too with this stamp set, you also, whoops, you've got a couple of different flowers there. Oh, hang on, everything's falling over. Um, so the daisy up here as well is more like a freehand daisy and it again has got the two-step stamping and the little flower bud as well. Um, you've got additional leaves there that you can use with the daisy. Now the leaves don't have the solid colour. So if you wanted your leaves coloured then you would need to colour those by hand as well. You've got a bit of a splatter there. I love stamp sets with splatters. And then you've got some awesome sentiments as well. Okay. Oh, you really love my card, Navon. Thank you so much. It's actually a cased copy of one of the cards in the catalog, um, but I changed it up just slightly to make it my own. I always like to do that whenever I case a project. I just make some changes to make it my own. All right, so um, let's go ahead with that. I decided to bring in my Stamparatus today. So I'll just move those dies to the side out of the way. All right, I thought that I would use my Stamparatus today for stamping those flowers. Um, and I did have, I had everything lined up and I did have the um, solid color for those flowers mounted up as well. And that's how I did that first one um, here. So I had that ready to go as well. And then I decided, no, I'm not actually going to use that one. I'm gonna color them by hand. So we'll pop this one away. Whoops, nearly dropped that too. Got the dropsies today, I'm dropping everything. All right, so I've got my, um, I put my little marks here on my cardstock where this was going to line up. Now this, this actual piece is actually a bit of a different size to my original piece. So I'll have to see if that's still going to fit if it's still going to be in the right spot. It won't really matter because we're die cutting it anyway. But in case I want to stamp it twice, what I'm going to do, so I've got, I'll show you the um, configuration I've got on my Stamparatus. So if you haven't seen the Stamparatus 
before. It's a stamp positioning tool. It's really fantastic, really helpful. Um, you can use any size stamp that we have in our range with this, including the large background border stamps. And it means that you don't need any blocks, uh, any of the clear blocks. We have these clear blocks as well, the ergonomic blocks. But if you have a Stamparatus, you don't necessarily need any blocks. You can just do everything with the Stamparatus. So it's a great stamping tool to have. Now on mine, oh, it comes with two of these clear plates, okay? These are removable. So you can only use one plate on there at a, well, you can only close one plate on there at a time, okay, because of the hinge system. But if you want to remove these plates, you lift this up to 90 degrees and you can lift it out. Then if you want to use it on the top hinge, some people prefer to use the top hinge, some prefer to use the side hinge. It just depends on what you like. Um, basically, you, you get the two plates that come with the Stamparatus. So basically what you've got there is you've actually got four stamping surfaces. So you can mount up four different stamps if you wanted to. You can mount one on the front here and then one on the back, front, back. So you've got, rather than needing four different blocks, you can have everything all mounted up ready to go. And then when you go to do your stamping, if you, especially if you're doing multiples too, it's great for if you're doing multiples, you're basically just going bang, changing the cardstock, bang. Um, yeah, you can actually, if you're stamping on the same piece, you can have your stamps already positioned in place so that you just stamp on this one, take that out, leave your cardstock in place, turn it over, stamp your next stamp, so maybe your sentiment stamp, and have everything all lined up. It's really cool. Now underneath here, I've actually got the um, the foam pad that you can purchase um, separately. I, it does come with a foam pad, but you can purchase these separately as well. This one's got the, um, the grid plate on it. Um, I've actually got that turned over so that I've got more of a spongy side to it because I'm using photopolymer. And then it comes with this base. So if you're using the red rubber cling stamps, you don't use this mat, okay? You just use the, um, the base like that. But with the photopolymer, you need that extra bit of height and cushioning. So then you put the, um, the mat in. I've also got some of the mini grid paper that fits perfectly with the Stamparatus. And I've got that in there as well. You do get two magnets that come with the Stamparatus. You have to be really careful that they don't connect. Okay, they need, you need to keep them separately. You can store them. They've got a little storage space at the bottom here on the Stamparatus, but you have to keep them separate. They're very, very strong magnets. You also notice that we have non-slip rubber feet here on the Stamparatus as well, which is awesome. Um, if these two magnets snap together, they will most likely break and you don't want your finger to get caught in between that because they're extremely strong. Uh, we do sell replacement uh, magnets now as well, which is great because um, so many people have had accidents with them snapping together, hence why mine are wrapped in um, washi tape, because if they do accidentally snap together um, and they shatter, then they'll be contained within the washi tape and I won't get any uh, metal splinters or anything like that in my fingers. So that is why. And I have a little tab. I made a little tab on them just to make the magnets easy to pick up as well. That's another reason why I put the washi tape on there. All right, so let's line up our cardstock here. I'm gonna pop it there. Um, actually, I'm gonna line it right up against that edge there so that I know where it is. And I'll pop my magnets on to hold my cardstock in place. I'll put my plate in. Now, I'm only using the one plate today because I'm only going to be using it just for this one stamp. Now, the plates, when they sit down, or oh, the other thing too, if you're doing, um, for instance, if you're doing a sentiment and you want a repeated or, or a repeat a patterned stamp that you want the pattern repeated, you can do what's called hinge step stamping. So you do your stamping, you take your plate out, you move it down one hinge, you stamp your ink up again, do the next stamp, and then keep moving down like that so that you get your image stamping repeatedly down the page, which is super cool. It's great to do that with some of our sentiments, actually. Um, when you're putting your plate down, ready to ink up, it's a good idea to pop a stamp case 
underneath just to give it a bit of support while you're pushing that ink onto um, that plate. It makes it much easier to get the ink onto your stamp. And the good thing too with the Stamparatus is if when you're stamping, if you don't get a good um, image the first time, um, you just ink, re-ink your stamp and stamp again. So let's see how we go. So you give a nice firm press. Now you'll notice that I've put mine in the middle. I, I never put my cardstock towards the edge because you don't have as much give in the plate towards the edge because of the hinges. So I always like to go in towards the middle so that the plate is nice and bouncy and you can actually get some good um, pressure onto that plate. Okay, so when I lift that up, you can see that this flower hasn't quite um, stamped out properly. I didn't have enough ink on that part of the stamp. So because I've got that in place, I can just stamp again. So I just re-ink my stamp. So tap, tap, tap. Might need to re-ink my memento pad, I think, actually. There we go. Let's stamp that again. Now, hopefully my cardstock didn't move. I don't think it did. Sometimes it can stick a little bit to your photopolymer stamps. So just lift it up really carefully. Beautiful. Oh, it didn't stamp again. What is happening with this one? Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give that a bit of a clean. Because this stamp set is brand new. And I did give this a bit of a clean before I started, but I might not have given it quite enough. Um, when the photopolymer stamps first come to you or the first time you go to use them they do have a little bit of manufacturing sort of oil or something on them and they don't always hold the ink straight away so it's a good idea to give them a clean before you actually use them and we're just going to pop a little bit of scrap in there yeah so always give the photopolymer stamps a bit of a clean before you use them just to take off any of that manufacturing um, residue see how we go this time or it could even be that I didn't put enough pressure on that side of the flower too that side of the image let's see that's better there we go all right good okay and my stamp and chamois love the stamp and chamois it's great for um, cleaning your stamps and your plate of your stamparatus as well there we go Good. Okay, so we'll take that out. We'll keep those magnets separate or separated, I should say. So we're done with that. All right, put the case to the side. Now I've decided today, I'm going to put a little bit of um, paper underneath. I've got thick whisper white, a thick, yeah, this is actually whisper white. Whisper white has retired now and now we have basic white. But um, I'm using the thick because I'm going to be coloring with Stampin' and Blends and it absorbs the, um, the alcohol in the ink a lot better. And so um, it's always good to use the thick because the alcohol blends do bleed into the cardstock and they will bleed through even the thick cardstock, but they do so more with the um, standard Whisper White. So I'm going to use this time. Last time I used Pool Party, I think it was. Which one did I use? Yeah, I used Light Pool Party for this one. But then I thought there was too much Pool Party going on and it wasn't quite different enough to the leaves. And then I've got the Pool Party ribbon. So I thought this time I'm going to try with the Misty Moonlight. And we'll see what Misty Moon... This is Light Misty Moonlight. So we'll see how they the flowers look in Light Misty Moonlight. And that'll also help to bring out some more of that blue out of the cardstock, uh, out of the um, designer series paper. I'm not going to worry about doing any blending. You could, if you wanted to, do some um, blending with the dark and the light misty moonlight. But I'm not going to worry about doing that today. I just want these flowers just to be a single colour and just be, you know, a fairly light misty moonlight blue. The dark misty moonlight. Um, blend is quite dark so it might um, be a little bit too dark for this all right so we've got that one and then I'm using um, the light just jade for the leaves 
Now Just Jade isn't actually in this designer series paper but I thought it went really well with the colors that are in there because you've got the pool party and the mint macaron and I just think that the Just Jade coordinates beautifully with them. A little bit more up there, there we go. All right, so that's as easy as it is to color those flowers. Super simple. Now I'm gonna bring in, and you'll see, actually the color hasn't seeped through too much on that. Look at that, that's pretty good. It's good that we use the thick. All right, I'm gonna bring in my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And we're gonna do a little bit of die cutting. I love my little mini. It's so super handy to have on the desk. And great for filming too because then you can see what I'm doing <laughs> so I've got um, when you receive your stamp your mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and the large one too it comes with the plates that you need to get started so um, I'm going to be having my number one base plate on then I'm going to have one of my number two clear plates I'll then put my cardstock in with my die on top with the cutting edge down I'm going to line that up and I'm just going to hold that in place with a little bit of washi tape. Now I've just got some retired washi tape here. Um, you can also use post-it notes. Um, there's also, I believe, I've been hearing lately about post-it tape, which is reusable um, tape, which is like a post-it note, but in tape. And apparently that's really good too. I thought maybe next time I go to our local stationery store, I might see if I can find some of that okay then we'll just take that through our stamp and cut and emboss machine sorry if it shakes the camera a little bit there we go so we've got our beautiful flowers already cut and while we're there we'll just cut out our um, scallop rectangle as well So um, I love with the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine that it has got the handle that you can hold onto the top as well to stabilize everything as you're um, cranking it through. Because it's such a small machine, it does have a little bit more movement to it. It does have rubber feet, but it will depend on the surface that you're using. Um, but also too, because it's only got a small um, footprint which is great because when you fold it up it's really tiny great for traveling with so it's only got a very small footprint but of course when you're using it you do need to just um, give it a little bit of support so having that grab handle on the top is fantastic for that all right and then we're going to pop in our um, rectangle our scalloped rectangle die now because um, the rectangle die has a fairly straightish edge there. I'm going to pop it at just a slight angle, which helps it feed through the rollers and stops that speed bump happening and makes it a little bit easier for your machine to, um, to grab that to go through. There we go. All right. Good. Okay. There we go. So if you wanted to, you could even, if you'd lined that up straight, mine's not quite straight, but you could actually use that um, negative piece as a little border piece for another project. So yeah, so consider that. Um, you don't always need to throw out all those extra pieces because you can use them on other projects. Okay, so we've got that piece. Now we need to do a bit of stamping on this one. We're going to stamp our sentiment. Now I'll bring in my um, stamp and pierce mat because again, we're working with photopolymer stamps and we wanna have that give, that bit of a foamy, um, foamy spongy underneath so that we can um, get a nice crisp image. And I am gonna be stamping in the uh, Misty Moonlight again. So I stamped the first one that I, the sample card I did in Misty Moonlight and this one I'll, I'm gonna do in Misty Moonlight as well. I'm just gonna stamp the image down the bottom here on the bottom right hand corner. There we go, beautiful. And we've got a nice, beautiful, clear image there because we use the 
um, stamp and pierce mat underneath. These stamp and pierce mats are available in the annual catalog as well if you're looking for them. Just give my stamp a little clean. All of the products I'm using today are available in the annual catalog. Okay, so we've got that done. So we've got all of our pieces ready now to assemble. There's our ribbon. Okay, so I'm just going to put this designer series paper. I wanted to show everybody how you can use your um, designer series paper. And um, I'm just going to adhere this directly down onto the card front like that. So, so super simple. I just wanted to show some simple, easy ways that you can use your designer series paper. There's lots of different ways that you can use it in your projects, in your card making, your scrapbooking. Um, yeah, so many different ideas out there. But I just thought I would keep it simple today. All right, so we're just lining that up so that we've got a nice even three millimeter border around the edge. Great. Now with the ribbon, I'm going to use some mini glue dots to adhere my ribbon. Um, the glue dots are on the roll. Hopefully you can see that. They're on the roll there. So you can either take your item to that glue dot to pick it up or you can use something like a take your pick tool. If I just take the cap off and use that um, po pointy end or the piercing end to pick up those glue dots, which is what I will do. So I just need to work out which way I'm having my ends on my ribbon. That's around the wrong way. So we wanna go that way. Yeah, okay, great. And I need to find the center of my ribbon. I'm gonna have my ribbon sitting like this. And then this part at the top, I'm actually going to fold that down to form a peak like that, okay? So I'm going to, that's my center. So I'm going to hold those two pieces together and I'm gonna put some glue dots on the back here. So I'm just gonna take my ribbon straight to my glue dot and it'll pick that up, whoops. There we go. This is the most fiddly part of the whole process is just the, the ribbon. And then I'm just gonna pop my ribbon down, I'll make sure I get that sort of in the middle, like so. Whoop, that's not quite straight. Good thing with glue dots is they are pliable, so they're maneuverable. There we go. So what I've done is I've basic, basically got the ribbon going horizontal like that and upside down. And then I've taken each end and just brought that in to form that peak at the top. Okay, now I'm not gonna have them go exactly straight like that. I want them to fan out a little bit. So then I'm gonna work out, I'll put my rectangle down and see, I don't want them to poke out past the edge of the rectangle, but where I've got them is actually pretty good. So that's about where I want them. All right, so I'll push that down there. And now I'm going to take my glue dots with, I'll just put my hand there. I'm gonna take my glue dots with my take your pick tool and pick up, oh, I just saw that they moved a little bit there. That should be about right there, I think. There we go. And I'm gonna just pop a little, I'm gonna slip a little glue dot. I don't know if you can see that there. I've got the glue dot on the tip there of my take your pick tool. So I'm just gonna slip that underneath there. And I'll do, I'll put a couple down. So there we go. So I can let go of that one now because that one's in place. And we'll put a couple of glue dots down to hold it all the way down. Now, if it turns out that these aren't quite right in the right spot, we can actually um, move them because as I said, that those glue dots are pliable so we can just keep checking with our cardstock to see if that's looking about in the right spot in the middle yeah that looks pretty good to me and we'll just add some extra glue dots underneath i'll just add one more under each side to make sure that it stays put so if you haven't seen the take a pick tool before it's a multi-purpose um, tool 
It has um, different attachments and they just lock in. There's a little locking symbol at the side there. And you just twist it and pull it out. So we've got the spatula end on the other end. There's also a stylus attachment that comes with it with two different size um, stylus. And then this end has got the putty, which helps you to pick up your embellishments. And then you can unscrew that. And then we have a die brush that fits in there as well um, for when you're doing intricate dies. You can um, use your die brush on your dies to remove all of those excess little bits. So it's a really handy tool and we've got the lid there just to protect ourselves so we don't stab our fingers. Okay, so ribbon is down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to um, pop our flowers onto here. Now I'm going to put them up on dimensionals. So I'm going to turn that over, bring in my dimensionals. Oops, my cord is falling down. Let me just get rid of that. There we go. Uh, I'll bring my take your pick tool in again because I also like to use that to pick up my dimensionals. Makes it a bit easier. Uh, there we go. Now I'm need, needing to cut some of these edge pieces of the dimensionals to use for these finer little details. Sorry, I'll move that over a little bit. I'm working off camera there. So I'll just get my tape scissors. Do you all have separate pair of scissors for your tape as for your um, cutting of your cardstock? I hope so. Unless you're using Teflon scissors. But these are the Stampin' Up! Paper Snips and they're great to use. They're, um, they're a nice short tip on them and they're really, really sharp. But they give a really great cut. So I have an older pair that is um, a bit more blunt that I use for tape. And I've got a nice sharp pair that I use for um, cutting of cardstock, fussy cutting and that sort of thing. I'll just pop one there on the stem. I might pop one more over here. There we go. Okay, so we'll remove all those backings using our take your pick tool again. That, yep, that one came off. I thought it didn't come off then for a moment. Okay. So then I'm going to um, mount my flowers up just to the left of the sentiment there. There we go. Oh yes, that looks nice with the, um, the blue flowers look nice with the blue um, sentiment. So I'll put some more dimensionals on the back there. This one came off the backing, so let's use that one. Oh, thanks. Oh, you got to go. No worries, Fee. Thanks for dropping in. See you later. Have a good night. There we go. All right, we'll remove those backings. And we're nearly done. And then what we'll do is we'll bling both of them up together because I didn't bling the first one. I actually ran out of time to get that blinged up before I went live today. There we go. All right, and then we'll pop that down there. Press that down, make sure those um, dimensionals are attaching. Just having a look to see where they're sitting. They're sitting actually on the um, ribbon. So I'm just checking. Oh, some of them are sitting on the ribbon and some of them are sitting on the, um, the actual cardstock. I should have positioned them a little bit better, but that's okay. That's all right, that'll stay put. Oh, that looks a lot better. I like that color much much nicer than the first one. I like the blue one. Which one do you like better? Do you like the pool party or do you like the misty moonlight? I like the misty moonlight flowers. All right, let's add some bling. Um, we've got lots of different bling to choose from. Tell me which one you prefer. Pool party or misty moonlight? Amber likes Misty Moonlight. Yeah, I thought she would. <laughs> um, let's see which bling we'd like to use. We've got so many different packets of bling in here. Ooh, some 
Silver pearls might be nice too. Actually, that needs to pop up a bit. That's not sitting right. Do you know what I didn't do on this one? Which I did on the first one. I just realised I didn't daub the edges on this one. I daubed the edges on the first one. Well, that's okay. I'll fix that up after. Yeah, I did daub around the edges of this one with the misty moonlight. And I didn't do it on this one. I forgot. I wonder if I could sneak a little bit of ink on there. I might try fiddling with that a bit later. Um, so we've got those ones. They might look nice because they've kind of got those bluey tones. That's the metallic pearls. I've used the gold ones up out of that pack. I do have another full pack in here which has the silver and the gold. Or we've got our basic rhinestones, of course. I use them a lot on a lot of different projects. We've got pearls. I think the pearls will get lost because it's very busy. And, yeah, I've got a whole stack of other um, bling as well. Let's see. So we've got that one and that one. Um, oh, Navon says she likes them both, but she thinks she prefers the lighter one on the left. Uh, that's because you love green. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad I did one in each colour then. Um, Julie likes Misty Moonlight and perhaps the Pool Party would look better on Pool Party cardstock base. True. Very good point, Julie. It probably would. Hey, Tina Marie. That's okay. No worries. You can always go back and watch the replay. I showed all of my beautiful birthday cards at the beginning and yours was one of them too. So you might want to watch the replay later. Um, all right. Let me just go grab my other box of bling. Because... I was just thinking, I've got all of this other bling, bling, bling in here. I've got these ones here, which would look nice. I've got, oh, I've got these ones too. Those ones might be, these are the blue adhesive backed gems. I'm not sure, not sure about those ones. We've got hearts, we've got those ones. And we've got the holiday rhinestones as well. They could go as well. Oh, lots to choose from. Oh, Kathleen likes them. Thank you. And Glenda says she likes the Misty Moonlight one. Yes, I prefer that one too. All right. So I'm looking at what we have. I'm thinking... Hmm. Oh, actually... Those ones might go. I haven't used any of those yet. Maybe let's try let's try something different. I haven't used these ones either yet. So let's try. I was just thinking. These um, 2020 to 2022 in colour square gems. I haven't used any of these yet. I'll pull some of them out and we'll see if they look any good. We'll place them on gently and not... Sorry about all the crinkling. Um, we'll place them on gently and not adhere them really tight until we've made a decision but I was thinking maybe what would that look like up in the corner oh or down the bottom in this corner that might be better let's have a look put one there they're square so we have to make sure we get them right oh yeah that looks nice and then we could put a little one we'll put a little one up in this corner And put a little one up in this corner. I don't normally like to do odd, um, even numbers, though. I normally like to do odd numbers. Maybe we could do another one. Or, let's see, could we do one this colour? Maybe a big one. I was wondering if we could incorporate that green. It's not the same green, but I thought it might go. Oh, hey, Lucia. Great to see you. Oh, Kathleen says maybe the contrast colour. Yeah, I'm thinking so too. Maybe we could pop one up, one up there and maybe change these ones over, you think. I could put these ones over here. That's why I'm not putting them, I'm not pressing them down really tight yet because I'm undecided. Oh, yeah, you're right, Kathleen. That looks better on that one. All right, let's do this on here. And I'll put the little one up here. Whoops. There. Yeah. Oh, and we need one up here. Big blue one up there. 
Yeah. What do you think? Kathleen says she loves that. Yeah, it was a good idea. Thanks, Kathleen, to um, alternate those colours. That was a good call. Thank you. There we go. Yay, I got to use my gems. I hadn't used those ones yet, so that was good. It's good to use some new product. I'll tell you, um, where's my catalogue? I'll just grab my catalogue and I'll show you where to find those gems. Now that I've got everything in my new catalogue all um, labelled. So they are here on page 142. They're faceted um, square gems. So they're the 2020 to 2022 in color square gems and you get um, their adhesive back to get a hundred pieces 10 each of each of the five colors so we've got bumblebee cinnamon cider just jade magenta madness and misty moonlight so there you go so we've used the jade and the misty moonlight which coordinate with the colors that we've used so there you go there's our two beautiful cards so, ah, oh, thank you, Tracy. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks, everyone, for your um, input on that. That's great. All right. So there we go. Um, and what I'll do is those little strips, those little off-cut strips that I had, what I will do is I will put, I've got two of them there. So I will make a, um, how are we going for time? Yeah, I'll do that after we finish. I'll put a white... Um, insert in here and I might actually use my dauber with the misty moonlight ink and I'll ink around the edges of my insert and then I'll use a piece the off cut piece to run along the bottom of my um, my white insert and then that will just bring the DSP that's on the outside to the inside so there are some great ideas really easy quick beautiful cards to you make with your beautiful designer series paper so make sure that you use it up all right so let me um cover up the camera and i'll flip up so that i can say goodbye to you face to face as i always like to do thanks glinda all right so just one moment i'll cover up the camera bear with me for one moment oh i did that clamp up very tight there we go Okay. There we go. Great. Good. We're back. <laughs> um, oh, Navon says, thank you. I really enjoyed. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And Navon, I think you jumped on a little bit later as well. If you would like to go back to see all of those beautiful birthday cards that I received that I showed um, at the beginning, feel free to watch the replay later on as well. So um, yeah, they're, they're really beautiful. I received so many. I was so blessed and so thankful. All right, so here's my two cards. Well, let's go. I always have trouble getting these. There, got them. <laughs> So I'm glad you like those um, and oh, I'm glad that I did the two colors because they appeal to two different people or well not more than two different people because some of you like the green and some of you like the blue so I'm really glad that I ended up doing both colors so yeah it was a happy little accident then wasn't it <laughs> so remember we've got our designer series paper sale happening right now get 15% off um, these nine packs that are available on the sale at the moment 15% um, off for demonstrators you get your demonstrator discount on top of that so it's another great reason to join um, as I was saying before I was talking about lots and lots of benefits of joining Stampin' Up but another benefit is that as demonstrators not only do we get our demonstrator discount of 20% or 25% depending on which level you're at um, you also get the customer discounts and specials as well. So you never miss out. You get the best of both worlds, which is awesome. So again, if you would like to join my team, um, please get in contact with me. I'd love to chat with you about that um, and give you more information. 
Um, this sale goes up until the 2nd of August, so you've got time to get those beautiful designer series papers and make sure you use them. Don't hoard them. We want to use all that beautiful paper. All right. Well, I hope that everyone has a fantastic week, whatever you're doing, wherever you are. Stay safe, everybody. Look after yourself and your families. And um, I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at four o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. So until then, happy crafting everyone. Bye.